right, y'all, we out here driving. Amanda's driving <laughs> her little event. We're gonna go see Colin Goble, Rick Acker. They recently wrote a book called uh, What We Hide. Y'all you know I read it and enjoyed it. And we're gonna go see uh, Denise Hunter and Patricia Bradley. And I don't know how you say her last name, but Cindy Sprouls. Hey, show them this uh, out here, Blake. Caney Fork River. Show them. Not hard to do it in the car, but it is hard, isn't it? But I can see you can see how pretty the lake is the river. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I am nervous about going up here because I was just telling Blake that whenever I go see an author or something, it's like my introverted self forgets everything about their books, the character names, it's gone. Like I don't, I'm like I don't know if I can talk about their books hardly because I forget. But anyway. Yeah, we're on this back road because I forgot to get Patricia Bradley's books to be signed. Blake's like, turn around. We got plenty of time. So I go back and guess what? I'm glad I went back because there was a wreck on the interstate. So we're going the back way to Murfreesboro. So that's what we're doing right now. It said two hours to get there from the interstate. I was like, no, we're not doing that. So. Uh -oh. Yeah, Blake was like, uh, <laughs> I was like, well, that was a God thing that I had to go back. <laughs> Because I would have been so upset. So we should get there in an hour. I just got like a bag full of books. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if they're going to be able to sign all your books. I hope they do. You know, on a dang table. I hope so. I hope that they'll sign them. They're really nice, usually. So, yeah. I think that was all of them, though. Cindy, Denise, Colleen, Rick, and Patricia. Now, Lynette Eason was going to be there. But they said she couldn't make it to this one. So they're going on like a book tour. So you know me, your girl, we, we, we don't get out. We do not get out. So guess what? We out. <laughs> Are you just filming the road the whole time? You know, I've been doing tours <laughs> too. All right, y'all. We back. We back. We got, what, 25 minutes now to get there. I don't know, we'll see. Get this. Anna's on her phone driving. I'm trying so to get that down. I'm just trying to get <laughs> Look at that, we're going to die. Like, she's driving with Blake. the phone. Look trying at this. Look at the map going. Okay, <laughs> oh, like, your eyes were off the road. He is roasting me. You know, I said that to you in another vlog. You're like, I'm just trying to get the song done. So. Yeah, and you're doing the same thing. <laughs> oh, we are on the way. We're on the way. So. I really don't know if I can vlog like going in there though. Like Blake cannot go in there with me because little man's in the back, so he'll be like having to keep little man from all the breakables. Yeah, and it'll be too really many hard. Breakables in there. So he, they were gonna stay out in the car so I could go in there. <laughs> I might ask somebody to take my pictures. <laughs> oh, I'm like, man. hey, can you hold my? Can you film me for like five minutes? <laughs> Just have some random girl film me like five minutes. Can you be my vlogger, like <laughs> no. So I did not plan to vlog today, but Blake's over here like, let's let's do an update. Let's do an update. He's wanting everybody to know what we're doing. <laughs> but we on the way to Murfreesboro, so anyway. Wilson County. Hello. We up here. Okay. Look at all these trees. The Tennessee living. We love a good green lit landscape. Carby roads, definitely not flat. Lots of, lots of hills back here, honey. We back here. The Tennessee, go, Tennessee hills. Country roads. Take me home. <laughs> I cannot sing. So, I'm excited though. I want to see how this is going to be like. I'll try to like film when I can, but it'd be, you know, it's kind of awkward to do that. I think in a event like that or a signing, you kind of want to be in the moment. You don't want to be like hanging your phone out. So, but I'll definitely take pictures and show. I'm gonna definitely. Man, just like I have no questions. I'm like I, I don't know what to say. I only have one for <laughs> was it Colleen Coble? No, like, Colleen Coble. I want to know if her and Rick Acker are gonna write book two because they have a book coming out in November, but the synopsis does not sound like it's continuing in this series. That they first wrote. So I'm like, I need to know because book one left off in like a little bit of a hang uh, hangover. Cliffhanger. <laughs> hangover. <laughs> I don't I had a book hangover when I read it, I guess. Uh, but it is a hey, 
Hey. Whoa. Oh, oh my goodness. Y'all know you in Tennessee. You know we in the Tennessee Hills. You got a <laughs> truck full of hay, guys. Hauling the hay bales. Oh um, but, hey, so, yeah, that's what my question really is. Like, are y'all going to write a book too? I need to know. But, like I said, they have one that's coming up in November called I Think I Was Murdered. And it's already on Neck Alley. I requested it. But when I read through the synopsis, it did not sound like it had anything to do with the first book. So I was like, okay, I need to know. Like, what's the he point? finally got off, guys. Hey. Oh my goodness. So, yeah, that's really all I got, you know. And like, I've never read Cindy Sproul's books. I'm gonna Is ask it her. Sproul's or Sproul's? I'm gonna ask her how you say her name. Sproul's. So to make sure I understand, it's S P R O L E S. So I would think that's Sproul's. So, but she has Appalachian type stories. I would love to read those. So, I've got two in my, my bag. <laughs> my big old bag of books. Got so many. My goodness. I said I'm going to buy a few more books while I'm in there. Oh, no. Why? <laughs> Look. It's buying books. I'm, if Polly Cobble's there, I need to get the Annie Peterson trilogy. So that I can have that on my shelf. I love that trilogy. It was so good. Look at this guy. Do you see this mess? Bro. Oh, man. He's in a hurry. He's going too slow. Look here. He's, he's, <laughs> I'm going 60. He's going too slow. He's in a hurry. He's that late. Right there. He's, he's Look late. at that house. Look at that house. He's late going to that Christian uh, <laughs> Christian bookstore. <laughs> he's in a hurry. Look, it's three minutes till 10. He's got to get there. He's got to get there, bro. He's got to get there. He's like, I'm getting my book signed first. I'm getting my book signed what? first. I'm getting my oh book. Gosh, I'm getting my book signed first. I'm getting my book signed. Get out of my way. Get off my lawn. Get out of my way. Oh my gosh. He's in a hurry. Killing cows. Chrissy and them cows. Oh, Chrissy and cows. I can't sign. Sorry. I missed, I missed it. You're missing footage. Oh my gosh. That was hilarious. There was a bunch of hay bales earlier I could have got. but Okay, here's a little field. That pretty good. Yeah, yeah. here I am. We're commenting. Kind of, these windows all are kind of All the commentary. Tinted, all, the, all the commentary. All Coming the, straight from the hubs. Cannon County. Here we Coming are. Straight from the hubs. Look at the hubs. I hope your filming skills are good. People let us know in the comments. Yeah, I mean, this phone's kind of Auburn hard Town. I ain't never heard of that. Auburn Town. I guess if you're an Auburn fan, man, like, that's right up your alley. I ain't been out this way. Auburn like, Town. This I'm is Auburn like, Auburn like Auburn uh, Town. Okay. Oh, well, I guess it's Dollar General, there's one every quarter mile. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> every every four-way stop, you'll On find one. On my way to work, there's, uh, I passed three of them. Just and, like... Uh, and there's 15 minutes. I passed three Dollar Generals. Just like Gentrals. when you... Have you ever noticed, Caddy Corner, whenever there's a Walgreens, there's a CVS right across. It oh, never man. fails. He's tired back there. Oh, yeah. my old man there, too. I'm long. tired, I'm too. I don't want to to have to wait. <sighs> Oh, man, it'll be there two hours. She's doing that solo. I'm gonna go to this local bookstore where we live. She was too afraid to drive by herself out here. Look, I didn't want to go out here, y'all. I'm just like. She's like, it's a sketchy place. It kind of is a little bit like I'm not familiar with the area. So anyway, but this afternoon I'm gonna go to the local bookstore back home. There is a, an author named Kim Griffin, and she has like. Uh, not quite Mr. Darcy, not quite Mr. Darcy. I think that's what her books the are called. Hand. Not quite <laughs> Colonel Brandon. I think I can't remember the names of the books. I'll have to just show y'all later. But she's a local author and I follow her on Instagram. She follows me and she told me she's gonna be there. So I was like, Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come by. So it's a day full of author signings and I'm I'm very thankful because I never get to go do anything anything like that. So anytime they come close by, your girl is going. Okay. Now, Becca Kinzer's coming back, but I'm not going to go to that because it's like during the week. I haven't met her before. I said, how come you haven't met Becky Wade? She's not come to Nashville yet. She has She came in 2019. I think she was here in 2019. I think she was here 2021 or 2022, and I couldn't get off work to go, but do something. Becky Wade. But, yeah, I, I got to meet her, and Gabriel Meyer, 
So the, the ladies you're meeting today, you haven't met before, right? right. These authors? Right. Oh, okay. So these are all new authors yeah. you haven't met. And, and they're pretty popular, like Christian fiction authors. So I think that's really nice that they're doing like a tour. All right, y'all. So we are going in here. Christian Publishers Outlet. And you can see the sign it has Denise Hunter on there and others. So let's go. settings and I told her I said you know there's two books I saw hers at books of me and so I, I was actually brought some of my books for them to sign too so that was really nice that they did that but I bought some books so I'll show you the haul here in a little bit um, whenever I get back home of course I already put pictures in kind of what I bought mixed in with what I own that I got signed but I'll still just kind of show it and kind of go over some of them and maybe talk through what I've read what I haven't read but it was really nice meeting them. I'm really glad Blake kind of encouraged me to do this little vlog. I literally, it is too, too hard to kind of do clips, y'all. I just feel like that's awkward. And I just, so I didn't have like really footage from the signing thing, except for like just very little. I just kind of put my phone out a little bit, but I didn't want to be weird. And so <laughs> that's kind of what you got, but there's pictures and it's just, it's just nice to share it. Denise Hunter was just really sweet too. Like she was sharing about how important it was to write clean fiction and you know she's like yeah you could pick up one of these books and it be completely like not what you expect to go into it right and so she's you know talked about how important it was for her to write clean fiction and I really appreciated that too because we needed more of that and she said how much she appreciated people like us like sharing as well um in the community here to let them know uh to let readers know that there are other options so that was really nice um, to hear that feedback, you know, that it means a lot to them. Um, and so, uh, Colin Coble and Rick Acker, they are going to write book two in the Topello Grove series after what we hide, but, uh, the next one that comes out in November is not, like I saw, like I thought, it's not related. So they already kind of had that idea pitched, she said. And so they are going to continue on later in the next book in that uh, Topello Grove series, but it's not going to be the book that comes out in November. So either way, I'm excited to read whatever, whatever they write. Anyway, uh, I will check in with you guys here in a little bit. I'm actually going to go to the local bookstore that y'all have seen me meet some other authors at. There is a local author, like I was saying earlier. Her name is Kim Griffin, and she writes, I think, contemporary or contemporary romance. I'll let you know more, of course, about those books later. I'm going to buy them today and kind of share. I haven't read them at all, but she lives locally around here. Um, so it's nice that she's going to be at this bookstore and she let me know that. And so I'm like, Hey, yeah, I'll stop by. So just dropped uh, a little bit ago, dropped Blake and the hubs off. Um, and we're going to, well, I, we, who's this we? It's me. <laughs> I am going to, uh, go over here and park and go into this plenty, they call it plenty bookstore. Okay. Uh, in Cookville. And we are going to, I keep saying we, <laughs> I guess like, this is we y'all with me. Okay. 
But I'm gonna go in here and meet her and get a picture and stuff like that. I don't know if I'll film it in there either. That's kind of weird. I can't wait to hear more about her books and stuff because the titles are very interesting. I mean, not so Mr. Darcy or something like that. Let's go. <laughs> you just got Mr. Darcy in the title and you sold me, honey. Okay? You sold me. So anyway, I will update you guys when I can. This is our downtown area. I think I've showed you guys before. But down there is a place called Ralph's Donuts. If you're ever in Cookville, Tennessee, you have to go to Ralph's Donuts, okay? It's a staple. Uh, anyway, so then we go on up here. And this mural is where I take a lot of photos with my friends whenever we come visit. Because this is usually the place we come to visit, right? Hopefully the wind isn't that too bad. Y'all can hear me. But, um, yeah, I love this little mural with the flowers and everything over there is the depot we have got cream city ice cream and the actual depot museum which is pretty cool you can see a lot of the history of the town and the train set and everything that's in there and there's a bike trail and all this good stuff down there so i've taken several pictures down here as well whenever amy and joe came to visit and miriam as well so yeah but this is just like a little downtown area and um Let's keep going. <laughs> walking, walking, walking. And so this cute little bookstore is just adorable. And it's right around the corner. You can see bookshop. That's a little blurry, sorry. All right, y'all, we are back home. I'm so excited to chat with you guys about the books that I bought, what I got signed, and just more about the signing experience today. I hope you all have had a good day whenever you're watching this and enjoyed the video for what it was. I know I didn't do a lot of filming as far as like actual film filming in there, but it's just really hard to do that. Like I said, I feel like that is a bit awkward and I always want to try to just be more so in the moment. So I did do like maybe 20 to 30 second total clip while I was at the bookstore, but you kind of get the picture of what it looked like in there and had some pictures and everything as well. So I hope you all will check out these authors and just see if you find something new that you enjoy. They're kind of a wide variety of genres. And so I'm sure there is something for everyone here. And with that said, I want to mention how I said in the last clip that I was going to this local bookstore that has been having a lot of good book signings lately. And that's where I met Becca Kinzer and Savannah Scott. And so to this time there was this lady, Kim Griffin. Okay. And I told y'all, I've not read her, but like these books, Colonel Brandon. Okay. She told me it's from Sense and Sensibility. I've not read it yet. So no wonder I didn't know, <laughs> but a Christian romance, contemporary women's fiction stories. And they have lots of layers of depth and salvation moments and things, lots of scriptures. I think I'm going to enjoy these. They are definitely based off of Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility type stories. And in this with first one, we have book one is not quite Mr. Darcy. Okay. And I love these covers. She said Hannah Linder actually helped design these. I am highly looking forward to this book. It's one that I actually might try to read in August. We'll see. I'd love to do a reading vlog for it. She is a local author here, indie published, and I absolutely love to share about indie authors when I can. Okay, there's so many out there. I know I'm not able to share a lot of them, but in this, I really wanted to share these because these sounded so good. It is a truth universally acknowledged that Mr. Darcy does not exist. <laughs> that is so true. So true. Like, she was telling me how you know how we always feel like we want like this Mr. Darcy type guy, which at the beginning, you know, he has a lot of pride, but then he kind of grows and realizes he was full of pride, right? And he's a swoon worthy guy that, at, at the end, right? So <laughs> in this, you realize that not all men are perfect. Not everyone is perfect. Not everyone is Mr. Darcy, <laughs> the perfect type guy out there, right? A young woman has spent years looking for Mr. Darcy, but Kate Thomas knows better. A 29 year old recently widowed Southerner Kate sets off to find herself on the other side of the ocean in the very country where Mr. Darcy's life was pinned. Looking only to escape reminders of her heartache, Kate journeys to places she'd never thought she'd go, finding faith, love, and family along the way. This is not a Pride and Prejudice retelling, but the story of a woman's journey to discover what re real love is. So I am really excited to dive into this. I think it sounds really good. And she is a former interior designer and homeschool mom who's been leading Bible studies for over 35 years and working in women's ministry for over 25. Several years ago, God led her to begin writing Words of Hope. She writes Christian women's fiction with clean romance. Her desire is that her books will draw readers closer to God who sees all their imperfections and loves them still. So, 
that's this book. I hope that you guys will check it out. I will link it down below. It, I know it's definitely on Kindle. I think I've got this already on my Kindle. I just hadn't gotten to it. So I did decide to pick up a physical copy to support her. And she did sign it. So love that. And in here, I haven't looked at this what she wrote yet, but <laughs> there are some stickers and a, or there's a sticker and a bookmark. And it says, <laughs> and it definitely has a quote about how Mr. Darcy doesn't exist. And on the back, She's a newsletter too, if you want to sign up for that. But I'll link her website down below too. So, yeah. Love that. And then the uh, the quote, the same quote is on here on the sticker. So, love that. One, and then book two is Not Quite Colonel Brandon. And she told me he was in Sense and Sensibility. He's not like the main guy, but he is a side character in there. A missionary, a pendant, love. While most girls dream of Prince Charming sweeping them away, Megan Taylor's calling to leave North Carolina and become a missionary came at a young age. After her mother's cancer and death, those plans turned upside down. Megan finds herself in London with several men vying for her attention while she finishes writing her late mother's book on Egyptian ant ant antiquities. Antiquities? Antiqu antiquities? <laughs> I can't say words. Um, <laughs> she soon has more chaos in her life than just questions of where God wants to send her and if and if she should date. But her determination and focus while pre preparing to be a missionary has left no room for romance except in her beloved Jane Austen novels, especially since the sensibility. After inheriting a, an antique necklace, she gets caught up in a mystery, danger, and intrigue. Let's go. An unlucky partner joins in her search for answers and she can't help but wonder if romance waits in her future after all. In the midst of their quest, will she find and recognize her own Colonel Brandon? And can she still fulfill her life's calling? This is this is inspired by a sense and sensibility and the idea that people are not always what they first seem. So, these sound really good. I love the covers, like I said. There's also a bookmark in here. It has a sense and sensibility quote on it that says, The more I know of the world, the more I'm convinced that I shall never see a man whom I can really love, Marianne. And it's got the synopsis on the back. And then this has may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. And that is Romans 15, 13. So sticker there. So love that. Love those things. Add those to my collection here. All right. So that is Kim Griffin. Check her books out, you guys. I will try to read them at some point. Okay. I would love to actually try to read that one for August. We'll see if I get on with it. If I can. You know how my plate's full, but we'll see. So, now that that's said, let's talk about Cindy Sprouls. Now, I've never read her before, like I said, but I was really excited to meet her, and she was super sweet, and she's from East Tennessee, so I thought that was really cool, and her stories are Appalachian stories, and in these, she said you can read these as standalones, by the way, but this one is Mercy's Reign, okay? Coal Black Lies, which I've already bought this myself recently and just took it with me. Um, Liar's Winter, What Mama Left Behind, then that cover gorgeous, let, let me just say, the scenery, and this is where it ends, and she put a sticker on here because it's a Sailor winner in 2024, so, um, now, I will say, this one's published by Ravel, actually, and these others, let's see, this one's What Mama Left Behind, that is Ravel, and then the rest of these are Kriegel Publications, I think that's how you say it, but, these, the ones I purchased while I was there was Mercy's Rain and Liars, Liars, yeah, I was like, did I say that right? Liars Winter, What Mama Left Behind. And I already had This Is Where It Ends as well. So these two I'd already had, but then I bought these three while I was there to support her because I couldn't find these others and I really didn't want to buy on Amazon when, number one, these were cheaper at this Christian publisher's outlet that I went to and you never know about Bezos and the shipping, honey. Anyway, that's a whole thing. So, really, really excited to get to at least some of these. If you've read her, let me know what your favorite book is by her. Um, this one says, Mercy Roller knows that her name is a lie on Mercy's reign. She's married and widowed at 13, mother and childless at 15. Mercy has spent her life under the authority of an abusive father, the pastor. Honey, this is going to be, woo, we got some heavy topics. The pastor rules both her family and the community around Waterloo Mountain, Tennessee. Not a single person seems capable of standing up to the man who calls his sinful actions righteous. That is, until she takes matters in her own hands. Girl, is that all we need to know or what? I am here for this. This is, 
An unforgettable story transports the readers to 19th century Appalachia, revealing the thorny path from bitterness to forgiveness. I am here. I love a good in-depth story like that. Wow, that sounds really, really in-depth. This one's much shorter. This one was like 200 pages or so. And it says, from the moment, Lochiel, Lochiel Ogle, L-O-C-H-I-E-L. From the moment she entered the world, her red wine birthmark has put her life in jeopardy. Mountain folk call it the mark of the devil. Uh-oh. And for the evil that has plagued her 19 years, she can't help but agree. If there's one thing she knows, it's that people only wish her harm. Beaten and left for dead by her brother. Girl, the topics! Girl, we need to know what's going to happen. She is rescued by a stranger. At his hands, she experienced kindness and love instead of fear and hatred. And the lies behind her entire existence are exposed. But just as she begins to trust the Savior, she finds her life in danger again. Set in the wild and beautiful Appalachian Mountains of 19th century East Tennessee, this is an unflinching, inspirational exploration of prejudice, choice, and learning to trust God. Y'all, these gonna be emotional reads. I can tell you that right now. What mama left behind? Oh, honey, am I ready for this synopsis? Woo! Okay, in the face of overwhelming obstacles, she'll need courage, grit, and a tender heart. Worry, W-O-R-I-E, Worry, Dressar, 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 D-E-R-S-S-A-R. There you go. Is 17 years old when influenza and typhoid ra ravaged her Appalachian Mountain community in 1877, leaving behind a growing number of orphan children with no way to take care of themselves. Her mother has been secretly feeding several of these little ones on Sourwood Mountain, but when tragedy strikes, she is left to figure out why she, why and how she was caring for them. Played the two good for nothing brothers. Y'all, I <laughs> said that really southern. <laughs> good for nothing. <laughs> Plagued with two good-for-nothing brothers, one greedy and the other a drunkard, Worry must fight to save her home and the children now in her begrudging care. Along the way, she discovers the beauty of unconditional love and the power of forgiveness uh, as she cares for all of Mama's children. Honey! In the feels. Wow. And then these two, I'm sorry I'm reading the synopsis, but we here. I uh, <laughs> just want y'all to know about these, you know? Cold Black Lies. And I think this was a recent release, actually. I got this in books of me in. Uh, 2024, yeah. So, coal miner Joshua Morgan. I love coal miner stuff, too. Like, my papa was a coal, was, worked at the coal mines uh, back home in East Tennessee. So, yeah. Coal miner Joshua Morgan did the impossible. He broke away from the stranglehold. Stranglehold? I guess. Of the Barton family in the company store, to whom all the miners in Appalachia Mountains are indebted. But in the process, his young daughter was run down and killed by Thomas Barton's posse. Look here. Uh, uh, oh my goodness. Five years later, a sweet but slow-witted young girl appears on Joshua's land. As Joshua shields her from the sinister clutches of the Bartons, his thirst for vengeance intensifies. He must take down the Barton family once and for all. But when confronted by a change of heart in Thomas himself, Joshua begins to rethink the dark lies burning in his own heart. If Joshua broke free from the mines and the Barton family, could Thomas have also? Despite his misgivings, Joshua must decide whether to join forces with his former enemy to end their tyranny and secure a peaceful future for the girl or plunge himself deeper into the depths of personal retribution. I need to know. Wow. I'm about to read her. Y'all, I don't know where to start. Okay. How long is a body expected to keep, keep a secret? Honey. Okay. This is for This Is Where It Ends. Some of y'all told me this one was really good. I think this came out last year, didn't it? Did it come out this year or was it last year? It says it's a 2024 winner, so I would think... No, 2023. So, look, she did sign them. And it said... Hold on. Blessings. That's her name. So, that was nice. Uh, when Minerva Jane was just 14 years old, she married a man who moved her to the mountains. He carried with him a small box, which he told her held gold. And when he died 50 years later, he made her a promise to tell no one about the box or treasure. Now at 94, she is nearing the end of what has sometimes been called a lonely life. But she's kept her promise. Even so, rumors of hidden gold have a way of spreading. And she is visited by a reporter, Dale Rankin, who wants to know more of her story. As an unlikely friendship develops, Minerva is tempted to reveal her secret to Dale. But the truth of what's really buried in the box may be even hidden from her. Honey, these all sound so good. And that was really like the first time ever reading these synopsis. 
some lots of C's, whatever you want to say it. So let me know which one you think sounds the best to you. Let's chat. Let's chat. I would love to know. So those are the books I got by her. And like I said, she did sign each one with that um, blessings like this too. So I thought it was really nice. And I did get a bookmark. Um, there's one bookmark she had like a coal. It looked like a coal piece or something on it. The way she did it was cool. Um, Blake went ahead and took that, put that in his room. You already know. <laughs> but I got this cute little bookmark. It says, meet me where I am, Lord. And it says, 90 days to know him deeper. So it looks like she's also got a devotional too. So love that. So I'll put that with my other bookmarks. Okay. Now, Denise Hunter. So y'all know that I've really enjoyed these books. I've read several of her books. The ones that are her backlist, I haven't really fully loved 100%. And I don't know if she knows it or not when I met her. I didn't really say, but I was like, I don't know if she's seen my reviews on some of the older ones. But I still really, I really recommend her books for good, clean romance books. So take that for what you will. It just depends on the trope for me. You know, there's a couple of books. I think there's only two books by her I have not enjoyed that I've read so far. Um, and it's, it's, it was a trope thing. It really was. It was just a trope thing through and through and that's okay not every book you're going to read by every author is going to be for you and that's okay but a lot of people have enjoyed like all her backlist too so just check them out see if they're for you that kind of thing my best friend amy loves her books and so don't y'all think don't y'all think when i was there okay i'd say where'd it go i don't even know where it went actually it's, here it is <laughs> don't y'all think i didn't buy her copy signed for herself and i'm gonna mail it to her <laughs> that's what we do around here okay but, but Amy loves all her books. And so when I met her, I ch told her how much we appreciated her. I think I already told y'all that in this other clip, but just how much we appreciate these good, clean reads, how they are just cute beach reads. And she even said, yeah, it's, it's funny that she brought this up because didn't we not just talk about this? She's like, I just wish that the books could be rated just like the movies and video games and stuff like that. I know that's not realistic, you guys. Like, I know I said that, but it's because there's so many books being published today I don't know how they would ever keep up but they do it for movies and they do it for for games so it makes you feel like there should at least be something mentioned here she even said that too and she said you know we could have a book that looks just like this but when you open it up and you have no idea what you're getting into right so I told her how much we appreciated her writing these books and she said she appreciates this community as well letting people know all about her books and other authors that write clean and Christian fiction so so yeah I did I did take my own copies with me <laughs> get these signed of love unscripted and a novel proposal these would be really cute summer reads take them to the, take them on the beach like just the perfect beach read as you can see from the covers i mean they really are super cute i've given both of these four stars and i really really enjoyed them so i highly recommend i have a reading blog actually where i talked about love unscripted i will link it below if you've not seen it but it was super cute so i'm so glad that i met her because she was very very nice so her husband was hilarious too he was over there like you on the newsletter oh you review books he's like uh, okay, so when we get this picture, he said, let's get the whole <laughs> table here so you can see. <laughs> he was so funny, and he was like, had that clipboard getting everybody's email <laughs> from the newsletter. I was like, I love this. That's so fun. A normal proposal deals with this author, and she's at this duplex, and she normally writes westerns, but she wants to write this romance, and she ends up uh, on the beach trying to get inspiration for a romance book and this guy's in the duplex and there's a little free library you can see on the cover that she ends up putting out there and there's somebody she ends up talking to the guy of course in the duplex next door and all that stuff but there is somebody that leaves like a, an engagement ring in this book so they're, they have to they work together to try to find whose ring that is and all this stuff and they kind of like start to like each other and stuff and love unscripted deals with this another author who is writing a or who's wrote a book sorry and she has a movie coming out about her story and she, there's this guy and she doesn't really care for him <laughs> because he's like this bad boy image I guess kind of like he's got a bad reputation in a way and so to build his reputation they end up fake dating and because he's supposed to be the lead guy in the, the movie for her book. And she's like, I'm just afraid he's not going to represent it well and all this stuff. So it was, it was just fun to see them fake date and really start to like each other. There is a third act breakup in this I didn't love. But other than that, it was too, super cute. There's a lot of third act breakups in romance books. So it's expected. It is what it is. But it's still a super cute story that I highly recommend. So Patricia Bradley, <laughs> all of her books. Look, I thought she was so sweet, you guys. I absolutely... Love oh wait one thing I just remembered I just saw it down here Denise Hunter sorry 
back up and punt. Okay, Denise Hunter, I did get these also. These are for her next release that comes out. Um, I'm not going to request it on NetGalley, but I will purchase it and read it at some point. Before We Were Us, okay? This is her next release. And it says it's for fans of Cheryl Woods, Annabelle Monaghan, Monahan, sorry, <laughs> and Carly Fortune. But again, sweet romance, clean, all that good stuff. She can't remember their summer together. He can't forget it. Uh-oh. So we will see how this goes on. But I thought it was cute. It's a little magnet. So I'm actually going to put that right now on my little book cart right here and put this bookmark with my collection. So love that. All right. Now we're going to go on to Patricia Bradley. <laughs> okay. She was like handing me all of her little bookmarks and stuff. <laughs> Look how cute these small ones are. And counterattack. I did have like a What We Hide, Colin Coble bookmark. I'll show y'all Colin Coble's books here in a minute. Crosshairs. Look how tiny this is. <laughs> And then this one, Obsession. So, lots of cute little um, bookmarks <laughs> that I got from Patricia Bradley. She was so sweet, though. Uh, I think they call her Pat Bradley, honestly. I'm pretty sure. Because I think when I requested her books for review, they said I'll get Pat's sent out to you. So, either way, she was super nice. And I actually owned all these books except for one. So, I only bought, ended up buying one today. But I already owned these. So I took all these with me. And book one in in book two in the Pearl River series I have read and I love these book three comes out soon okay I'm really really excited it's already on my neck galley okay it comes out this fall um book one is counterattack as, as you can see it's got like a chess piece like a lot of chess stuff is involved in this so it's got like pawns and queens and all the queen's gambit killer all this stuff's in this there's a police chief it's set in Tennessee it's a great romantic suspense I loved it it's second chance I think but there's something about look second chance romance in the rom-coms have not necessarily been working for me but second chance in romantic suspense it usually works for me I don't know why but anyway Final Witness is book two in this and this was, she doesn't remember the death of her parents. That's right. And someone will do whatever it takes to keep it that way. So she was kidnapped a long time ago. And I remember that guy. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> and she didn't remember what happened. She's back in town to discover kind of what happens. Another uh, canine officer in Tennessee is right there with her. All this stuff starts happening. This woman was searching for her granddaughter. And that's how she ends up back in town. Because she found her through a magazine or something like that. It's just like a whole thing. Really good romantic suspense story. Lots of like high stakes. This series, like there's always somebody after somebody. It's wild. Very, very good. These are these are definitely some of my favorite romantic suspense, Christian romantic suspense books out there. I mean, I don't talk about them enough, but I really, really like her, okay? Now, more of these. <laughs> okay, I have not read these, but this is the Notches Trace Park Rangers series. Book one is Standoff. Book two is obsession <laughs> these covers look at these covers book three is crosshairs don't that looks like somebody who does that look like looks like the girl off dawson's creek <laughs> i can't remember her name katie holmes <laughs> is that not <laughs> okay um deception so i did not have this one so i bought it I was like, oh, I don't have that one. The one she had sitting out there, so I went ahead and bought it. But um, y'all should send me in there with them books. I was like, I went back out to my car and took these and then brought Colin Cobbles back in. So we got to hurry because I've been talking for 25 minutes. So, yeah, I'm not going to go into each synopsis of this. But they are set in the not for the Notches Trace, which is the National Parkway stretches 444 miles from Nashville to Notches, the oldest town on the Mississippi River. It's a perfect road for a relaxed pleasure drive. Unfortunately for Luke... It's also perfect for moving drugs. Sent to Notches to infiltrate the organization at the center of the drug ring, Luke arrives too late to a stake out and discovers the body of his friend, park ranger John Danvers. John's daughter, Brooke, is determined to investigate her father's murder, but soon finds herself the target of a killer who will do anything to silence her. John Luke will have his hands full, keeping her safe, but who's going to keep him safe when he realizes he's, he's falling hard for the daughter of the man he failed to save? So... Sounds like it's going to be good on each one as well. I loved her little handwriting. Love that. Amanda, I hope you enjoy Brooke and Luke's journey. Blessings. And she put like a little scripture at the bottom. So, yeah, I won't, I won't share each one of those synopsises or anything. Um, but 
kind of what she wrote was like, thanks for, for coming to see me, that kind of stuff. So I thought that was really nice. And I love that she had all the bookmarks and things for the collection too. So yeah, that's her books. Okay. Great romantic suspense author. Please check her out, please. Okay. She's been around for a while. I need to go back and you can get more of her um, backlist books. I'm sure I'm missing some. Now, Colin Coble. Y'all seen the stack. And this is actually not even all the Colin Coble books. I actually realized I left some, some here. Like these were sitting here and I didn't, I didn't take these with me. So she had them there. I was like, oh yeah, I have them too, but it's fine. You can only take so much, you know what I'm saying? And I bought these. So the ones I bought while I was there was the Annie Peterson trilogy. And I'll just say, I love this trilogy. It is definitely one of my favorite Christian romantic suspense series of all time. It has really great audiobooks. So I decided to get them for my shelves because I'm constantly recommending them, you guys. One is Edge of Dusk. Book two is Dark of Night, and book three is Break of Day. And this is also a second chance romance, I want to say. Yeah, 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 yep, definitely is. And done well, done very well. So I'm not always a second chance person with contemporary lately, but something with these romantic suspense books is hitting right. So absolutely love these, highly recommend, great series, lots of family drama in this one. I'm not gonna go through the synopsis again, but in some, in the rest, probably in the rest of these, because <laughs> I'm just taking up too much time, but I will link this series down below in my reviews, okay, for the um, Annie Peterson trilogy specifically, because I highly recommend these. They are wonderful, okay? Ended up getting signed were Distant Echoes. I have not read this one, but I will at some point. And then these are two I got recently that um, I'm missing one of them in a series. I think they're book one and three, honestly. Uh, Twilight at Bainberry Barrens, and then The Inn at Ocean's Edge. So, got both of these signed. And she just wrote, I think, uh, God Bless in the in these. Because some of these are older ones. That's 2015. Yep. To Amanda, God Bless. So, that was really sweet. And then, okay, these are the two I have read. Uh, Fragile Designs. I've already owned this, so I didn't have to buy it today. But, um, took it with me. And I love this book. It was so good. I learned a lot about, um... Fabergé eggs. <laughs> it was like, what? <laughs> this was so good. I don't remember if I got four or four and a half, but it was, it was really great. Lots of like crazy family stuff in the end. Uh, drama and suspense was like, what? <laughs> so um, anyway, and then of course, what we had, uh, her and Rick Acker. And like I said, I asked them, did I tell y'all in the video yet? I can't remember, but uh, either way, I'm gonna tell you again. Uh, they are gonna have book two in this series. It's just not right now. Yeah, I did tell y'all this. Um, and then the one they have coming out later this year, which is right here on the back, it's like, I think I was murdered right here. This one is not related to this, but it's coming out in November and I plan to read it, okay? I have already requested it from Nick Alley. Like, I need to know, okay? And he actually writes, like, I think, like, legal thrillers stuff. I can't remember. I need to look at him up specifically just to kind of see. Either way, it was so wonderful to meet them. They were really great. And just to talk, hear them talk about their writing experience together was really nice. So yeah, that is everything that I got at the bookstore today. I would have loved to look around even more at, at, the book, at the bookstore itself and pick up maybe some more books. But honestly, I didn't need no more books. And number two, we're going to, oh, there's just some other things here in a minute. But number two, Lil Man and Blake was out in the car. I was in there for an hour. Very, very thankful to them and just appreciative that they went with me. I could have went by myself, but I get nervous going to towns I'm not really familiar with. I just, I have anxiety over it. So really, really thankful that they went with me and everything. And um, also, so also I got this uh, bag at the bookstore that gave me this. I thought that was nice. Has a little typewriter on it. I love that bookstore. It's so good. Uh, come home, had these in the mail. Tombow brush pens. Look, my girl Lindsay at, for books for, books for Christian girls. She's like, hey, Tombow has a sale, 50% off. I said, girl, that's dangerous. So I went on there and I was like, ah, I don't really want to spend. Still don't want to spend it because it was still $15 each. So I went on Amazon. <laughs> Did I need these? No, but I ended up ordering these because they were actually cheaper than the sale. So I got the tropical brush pens, dual, dual brush, brush pens, dual tip, and then just the bright colors. I really wanted the galaxy ones, but that I'll have to wait. So yeah. I have ordered these before, but I absolutely love these pens. They're so great. They have like the brush tip. Maybe I'll do another video at some point doing like the hand lettering and stuff. Y'all seen me do that several times before. So, but yeah, maybe I can keep these in a package. Probably not. So yeah, on the back, you can kind of see how people use them and stuff. In the end, dun, dun, dun. Influenced by Oshina as always, my girl. The books that mean package come in. <laughs> Hey girl, 
Um, what? I don't remember what number this is in the series. I've ordered the whole series. And they were like, I had a coupon. So I got like all four books for like $7 a piece. Why not? But The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And I wanted these covers. They got other covers. I do not like the other covers. I wanted these bright covers. So I bought them. I'm like, if, if these are going away, I don't know what the other ones, which one's newer, which one ain't. I don't know. But here we are. The Naturals and Killer Instinct. Got them in the mail today. These are why a... I don't even know. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, why a uh, criminal minds for the YA world? Okay. <laughs> Cold cases are about to get hot. Okay. 17 year old Cassie is a natural at reading people, people piecing together the tiniest details she can tell you who you are and what you want, but it's not a skill that she's ever taken seriously. That is until the FBI comes knocking. They've begun a classified program that uses exceptional teenagers to crack cold cases and they need her what she doesn't realize is that there's more at risk than a few unsolved homicides especially when she's sent to live with a group of teens whose gifts are unusual as her as unusual as her own soon it becomes clear that no one in the naturals program is what they seem and when a new killer strikes danger looms close honey caught in a legal game of cat and mouse with a killer the naturals are going to have to use all their gifts just to survive that's right there's like gifts and stuff in here i don't know it's like fantasy maybe whatever i bought it because she really liked it she recently read it i'll link her video down below she's also got me wanting to read the raven was it mark of the raven i already own that got that from chrissy for my birthday so yeah girl got it so there's a lot of books today lots of books today also <laughs> Did I get me an Anakin Skywalker shirt? I did. <laughs> Ignore me. I did. I got me an Anakin Skywalker shirt. So I saved y'all the laughs on that. Um, I did also get another Star Wars shirt recently too, but got me the Anakin shirt. Okay. I think I've been in here long enough. I foot falling asleep. 30 minutes, 34 minutes filming. So I hope you enjoyed this video for what it was. Let's chat below if you read any of these authors, all the good things. I hope that you can find something new to read that you might enjoy from this video too. Any reviews or vlogs or any of those links, you already know the drill. It's all gonna be linked, okay? And uh, this is a very impromptu video that I did not plan to film, but the hubs, he encouraged me to film this, so we're here. So I hope you enjoyed it for what it was. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye y'all.